What's up, podcast? I'm uh, just sitting here in my little pad in Foster editing the Jack Baker episode, which was recorded, uh, let's see, only a few weeks ago uh, down in Cronulla. Got a chance to stop by and say good day to, to Jack and have a good yarn. Um, guy's a bit of a legend. His reputation precedes him. He has probably done the biggest air ever in bodyboarding, but unfortunately didn't land it so well. Uh, fortunately survived it. Uh, we talk about that in the podcast. Um, this one's kind of fun. It was pretty quite impromptu. Uh, maybe a little bit of a language warning for anyone who gets offended easily, but, you know, Jack's... Well, I, I wasn't offended, but, yeah, a few, few um, interesting words dropped throughout. But, um, yeah, another interesting, interesting one. Good laugh. Had a lot of fun. Thanks, Jack for having a dinner date with me and uh yeah enjoy the podcast episode um little thing got these the boogie shirts available if you're watching this on youtube um happy to flick about to you had a few orders coming through last week so stoke thanks for all the support there guys um yeah get on with the podcast let me know what you think you welcome to the podcast jack baker um Instagram has been flooded recently with um, you out at a place near here that breaks quite well and you're not injured. So what's up with that? How are you still alive? Usually you you have some kind of near-death experience. Uh, Mate, I'm probably like a second-hand lawnmower running on two cylinders or something. Okay. Not really. um, My back's pretty cooked. Yeah, you you were just saying before we sat down, so what's going on there? Yeah, I... Well, ever since you know, I got pretty pretty rolled. Um, it's just never really been the same. You know, it kind of folded me in half like yeah. a deck chair. Once I hit the water, it's flat. Um, and then maybe like a year ago, I was zooming down this hill on a skateboard trying uh-huh. to impress this chick, and I fucking way too heavy on the front foot, wobbled, coming. I was warp speed down this hill. Yeah, right. And rolled over, and I couldn't walk for a week. And it was in the same spot that I got absolutely pumped at. And, um, yeah. So the injury you sustained was in the exact same location on yeah, your back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just, it's all, it's never really healed up. And now I just keep, um, yeah, like just standing in the surf. And I just got out and I was like, oh, I'm a bit sore. But mm, that's a problem. How old are you now? <laughs> 25. Yeah, that's too young for that. And lost all my hair. Well, not yet. You're holding on. Yeah, I'm holding on. To that's a Cronulla kind of theme, isn't it? Holding on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the older boys are bold too. Yeah, I know. It's just the thing. I'm, I'm cool with it. Just, just yeah. gonna wrap it up. Didn't yeah. I shave your head in Eureka? Yeah, recently? you might, you might have touched. I gave it, I you a trim. Nice. Yeah, gave him a trim. Before Said, I just added... son, take some advice. Wrap it up. <laughs> yeah, um, don't be silly. Yeah, with um, I oh, know it's hard though. It's hard going bald. Um, the with that wave though, let's like go back. I don't know if you've been podcasted on this question, but you know can. Can you take the listener and viewer through a moment by moment recount of what exactly happened? And it's that famous wave that went viral um, of of Jack flying. I mean, I can't even believe how far you flew. But <laughs> so, talk us through. Try to be as vivid as uh, possible. Vivid. Yeah. Tell a story. And like, I don't know. Like, realistically, I was just, just saw this nice little four footer and like. On the direction, it was it's it's real. It can get really juicy. You can just see what it's gonna do. You know, like yeah. it comes. It's got like this real nice ledge to it out there, and the swell was just like it was really nice east swell. We actually had a, a similar swell not too long ago, a few weeks ago. Yeah, it was really, really washy out there. Like you, you're sitting in the where you're taking off, and you can actually have like backwash literally washing at you. Okay. And it's the smaller days which are probably more gnarly. Uh huh. Obviously, like the bigger days, there's more water. You, like you like and there's heaps, it's more ferocious, mm. but just on those smaller days, you, you're gonna be closer to the rocks. Right. You're gonna be way close. You're not. Ta- you're taking off on semi on the inside, inside roof, ledge. Yeah, yeah there's, okay. it's like a step out there. And um, yeah, I just saw this real juicy one licking my lips and like I knew the rule of thumb is whenever you're surfing spot X, it's, it's not yours. Yours? It's not, <laughs> it's not yours, mate. <laughs> but what's the rule? 
it's you shouldn't catch the first like you should catch the first wave of the set. So oh, okay. you shouldn't really try and but I mean realistically if like if, if it's a bit high tide and just the perfect little smooch gets in yeah, there, yeah. it's a sweet spot. It just it wants to send wash. You'll, yeah, you'll yeah. get wash on the takeoff and then you'll go again and then just before you exit and I was really locked into it like, you know, pull up and I'm sitting in like a real nice four foot, not nothing over the top, but it was just really nice cone. Yeah. And I could just see all I could see was the wave that I was on was was almost equal to the wash that was coming back out. That's crazy. And I'm in this spot and I just, you either bail through the back and mind you surfing out there, you, you just go so fast because yeah. it's so bowly and so it's so sucky along that ledge. You, you literally are zooming. Yeah. So you either try and get to the other side and hopefully wherever you go up is outside of the wave yeah. or you could be in a real sandwich pickle. Like you're yeah. flying. I'm fucking going warp speed. Yeah. And as I, I come into it and I just, I, I gave it all, you know, try, I'm going to try and get on the other side of that wash just so wherever I go up, it's, I don't want to go through the lip, yeah. which is fucking, it is exactly what happened. Yeah. Sandwiched. Just my, like everyone goes, oh, you know, how was it? Do you remember it? And I'd say like, no, I don't. Because as soon as, if you watch it, I don't go out in front of the wave. I go through the wave. Yeah, it sends gnarly. me, my my head hit my board and then like you can imagine the lip pushing and pressing me onto that. I was pretty much unconscious until like I, I just had this real, if you've ever been knocked out before, you know, you're all the stars and you just yeah. have no idea what yeah, the fuck yeah, yeah. is going on. I've and, experienced something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm just... I'm Bodyboard inflicted. Yeah. <laughs> it's fucking sport, isn't it? And, uh, but so you're, so you're saying you actually were just in an un, a semi-conscious As state. As I'm in While you're orbit, flying, yeah. I, like, I am, yeah, just no idea. And then maybe a millisecond before I went, fuck it, like... Oh shit, you know, it all dawned a flashback and then splat, I hit the water. And I felt like I didn't even hit the water. Like it, it felt like what I just landed into like a soft kind of water, softer water pocket, heaps aerated. Oh. And then I went, it fe that's what it felt like. Oh. I mean, I just had the fucking wind knocked out of me. Uh. Cause when you, when you swallow heaps of water, you're coughing and I'm underwater, I'm coughing and coming to and I'm like, wow, that was insane. Oh, like I'm sore. Did that actually like so many things and like I'm coughing underwater and I'm taking on water. I get to the surface and I spit all the water out and there's just blood everywhere. Oh. Like I'm like, and all I, I can't breathe. Like I am winded as and I can't breathe and it's just I, I the only breath I could take was like a and, and every time I would breathe it was getting harder because if it just I had what felt like water in my lungs but it was I thought it was blood. I'm coughing up mounds of blood. Yeah, yeah, I, right. I'm touching my face. I'm feeling myself. All I can see in my hand is blood. And to get in, like if there's no waves to help you in, like it, yeah. it's it's a good ten minutes. I'm paddling in, thinking I'm, I'm literally dying. Like, yeah. I'm coughing up blood. I cannot fucking breathe. Dear God, someone help me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm clinging on a lifeline. And yeah. So. I, I get in, like I, I paddle in, just trying to break, like really calm myself down, focus on my breathing. You know, come on, it's starting to get better. But if I take a, a deep enough breath, I'll, yeah. I will. I'll, 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 there's more blood coming yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get in on the rocks, and um, Shannon Glasson is like this. She takes photos around the area. She's, she's pretty, cool chick. Yeah, she's pretty cool. She's, yeah. Um, she's helped me out a few times. Um, but yeah, she was on the rocks and she's like, are you all good for coming up to me in disbelief? And I just say, call an ambulance. I, I'm like, yeah. I'm not well. And she's looking at me. I've got blood out in my nose, like my mouth, my wetsuit's covered in blood. I am in a state. I get up to the car park. People are clapping me, like l losing it. Couldn't believe it. Yeah. And I'm literally dying. And then yeah. and it, everyone went from laughing about it because it was funny. It was to, funny. To have seen that in like yeah. Yeah. it was funny to watch. Oh man, it would have been. It was really amazing. <laughs> They're all and then I say. But then they all switch. They went oh fuck. Yeah. And everyone's just grabbed my board and I went to De, um, Des from Emerald, like Luke O'Connor, yeah. my mate Josh Siege drove me to the hospital in my right. wetsuit. And I get there and the guy's like, oh, so what happened? I was like, man, I, I hit backwash and and. 
this is Indian guy. This is like, where's his Vekwash? Oh, no, no, so you're trying to describe this. <laughs> Mate, look, I just eat water really hard and I'm coughing up blood. And he's like, well, let's hope you're not dying. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck for yourself. I'm hoping I'm not dying yeah. either. And yeah, so it turns out I ended up um, bursting my lung um, and just, uh, which I think is, or a pneumothorax. I can't, it was remember which one it was and it's just that the layer between your outer lung and your inner lung had just popped. ruptured yeah and um it was just it was like six to ten weeks out of the water yeah pretty cru cruisy recovery and yeah and then I, ended up, I like it was like well i have to go straight back out there yeah it took me a, it, it didn't take me a while it just took a while for an actual good swell to get there. For you to get back in the, yeah, in the saddle. Yeah, maybe like four months. Oh, as soon as I could get the water. Yeah. Because if you, I reckon if you sit down and you watch it after something like a, an injury, you will probably sit down and not get back up. Yeah, yeah. You go cold. Yeah. Um, and yeah, something skateboarding. I learned from skateboarding to fall down. You've got to get back up and do it again. Mm. Or you won't do it again. Mm. But like, I mean, I must say, this Spot X, which many people who are listening to this know exactly what we're talking about. But like, it, it's been this place that for many, many years, it was quite dominated by a bunch of surfers from somewhere else. Mm. And, but you've really put the time in out there of the last few years now, you know, like you've definitely yeah. put your life on the line and you've put the time in there. Like, what's the vibe like out there today? Like, I mean... It doesn't have that heavily, like, is that aggro out there still? Is there an edge to it? Or is it kind of just like, you know what, whatever. Everybody's doing well, their thing. Well, mate, where we sit right now yeah. is Cronulla. Yes. 2230. 2230. Cronulla, 2231. 231. Right. But it's still, mm. it's part of this bay and headland, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You, you go to the other side and then... You've got Maroubra and, yeah. you know, Bronte. Yeah, uh, all eastern those. suburbs. Yeah, the eastern suburbs, right? Yeah. When you surf here, at the moment in the most current time, you're in Cronulla. You're, you're only surfing with your mates. Yeah. On whether it be stand-up and people to paddle out there, it's a proving ground. Yeah, like stand-up yeah. and bodyboard, right? When I'm surfing out there these days, it, it is surfing with mates. Yeah. It's, it's Sweet. obviously... There are these. There are goons on the internet, and they'll go, "Oh, fucking, can't believe this has happened." It, the the place being a circus that it is now was created by the people who ultimately complained about it in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've created this fucking shit show mm. with jet skis and like Red Bull competitions and whatnot. Yeah, but in saying having like the you know the the circus, these these the ski riders are what actually are the worst. Yeah. Because you're not meant to fucking tow. Like, obviously, chippies or whatever and, like, fucking 20 foot the right. Yeah, tow away, lunars. Yeah, yeah. This is such a small peak where you're... And it's a small wave, too, really, it, by yeah, comparison. For sure, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's such yeah. a small ledge. You've, yeah. I had fucking a tow rope literally go bounce off my shoulder as the guy did a Yui over the neck and then the fucking end of the bar just bounced over the top of my head as he was going to pick up his mate. And That's like gnarly. just not some random cunt with his ski license yeah, and his mate yeah. wanted to tow and prove themselves. Yeah. Sweet. Like like everybody's doing their own thing, but like there's there's crew out there paddling. I yeah. know, I know the rules of Chopu. Yeah. Like and and it can be done. It was done for years and years and years. Yeah. That's probably the biggest frustration out there at the moment is these fucking jet skis. Yeah. Because if someone's paddling, well then fucking up your game. Yeah. If that's your chosen sport, then be good at it. Don't yeah. be fucking it anyone can tow. Bodyboard, stand up. Yeah. But yeah, really coming coming back to the vibe out there. Yeah, you're surfing with your mates, even cool. the guys that are towing army mates, and I'm just writing the fucking shit out. Yeah, there. but it's good that it's happened because I just remember back in the day when I was hanging around these parts a bit was when it all kind of became problematic out there, and it was just it was sad because yeah. it was such a good it was such a good secret for the local crew and yeah um, yeah it's really sad to see. Well, when I when I first over. started surfing out there. Mm. Um, you, I wouldn't be caught dead in that car park. Yeah, right. I'd be checking it outside the car park up the top. Is anybody down there? Yeah. Are they surfers? Are they fucking yeah, yeah, fishermen? Yeah, What's yeah. going on, you know? But now I'm rocking up and I'm like, fuck, there's that many people here. Yeah, right. Which is like, it's cool because it's, you know, if if you know, from, you're from here, you're trying to surf a good wave, I guess. So. Yeah. But you're explaining um, 
Well, I mean, that's good. It's good to see that you're alive. You've had a good season out there again. The winter seemed to treat you well. Everybody lit up. Like, there was a yeah. lot of people that come out and... Yeah, it seemed like it was a good time Holy's out there. Holy coast, really? Fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of everywhere, up. everywhere went really well. It's really cool. Yeah. But let's get back to you. Like, I mean, who who is Jack Baker when he's not <laughs> flying through the air? Like, who who are you? Oh, seedy cunt. <laughs> 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 nah. Look, I I like to keep myself pretty entertained. I yeah. definitely love a doobie. Like, <laughs> holy demon. <laughs> Sitting at the beach. That's great. Coming out of a surf. Loves the dudes. Loves the dude. Hanging out with my mates. Chicks with G-strings is a fucking okay, massive that's a big, essential. That's a big essential. I don't know if that, like how far that'll get, but yeah, well, if there's any dream. out there. Yeah. You can dream. Um, but what, like you're a mechanic, right? Yeah, you're a mobile yep, um, mechanic as well. Yeah, so like recently qualified. this year, um, I made the, yeah, definitely qualified. No, you know, like you've done the apprentice, like you're 25, you could actually be an apprentice at that age. You could, yeah, for sure, you're yeah. not wrong. Yeah, no, I, um, I actually did my apprenticeship at BMW. Okay. I finished school and I, I went straight into an apprenticeship, did it all at BMW, which is super, pretty, pretty cool for yeah, a yeah. young guy, you know, driving around in all these flash cars. Sure. Yeah, look, look at me. And then you, know, you end up getting one. Yeah. Do some, I'm a pretty big hothead for sure. I love yeah. I love a burnout. Oh, cool. my God. I've, yeah, so, so I finished my apprenticeship. I've worked at a few other places. And then um, I was working as a mobile mechanic. And I went, fuck, fuck this guy. Like, surf's pumping. He doesn't care about that. Yeah. I want to go surfing. Yeah. I know a heap of, like, when you're your own boss, you get more resp- responsibilities, but so many more freedoms. Yeah, yeah. And, like, I'm happy to accept those responsibilities if I can surf. Yeah. Because that, if I don't get a good, if you don't get to surf when the waves are good, it just I feel I feel anxious. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot look at the surf cam and be like it's yeah. pumping like. And there's a lot of visibility around here in particular, right? Oh like, yeah, you, you know surf cams. Yeah, and you can see Shark Island yeah. doing its thing, yeah. and then you're just like, I hate life. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You, you do not look at it. That is nah. torture. <laughs> Yeah. Even if you're sick or injured. Well, it's even hard just living can. up the coast and just checking in and going like, damn, they're having What's a bodyboard like, comp out there. You know, like, there. Yeah. To see when the Cronulla Bodyboard Club is out there, it's just like, that's unbelievable. That's really cool. Yeah, cool. Desi really um, linked that up a treat. Hey, oh, like, that's sick. Any, like we've got the comp at Suck Rock. If we really wanted to, even though they're pretty pessimistic, the beaches here. Yeah. Um, what Cronulla lacks in sand, they make up in reef. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and mind you, the reef, fuck. There's probably 24 world-class waves in, like, this radius from Kernel to Bundina. Yeah. Within... Mate, mobile's off during the podcast. Shit, shit. What the fuck Sorry, is mate. this? Um, that could be a job, though. Is that maybe someone <laughs> no, like... No, they, no. They've got a carburetor yeah, mate, that they need to I'm replace. the boss. I'll tell them to wait. Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. It actually okay. is. It is. Okay. It is a Hilux. There you go. This guy wants me to look at a Levo box. <laughs> 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 I actually, I went to a school in Western Suburbs. If oh, yeah, where'd you little, go? It was in Burwood, which Burwood. was a huge culture shock. So, me Where's and, that? It, mate, in it, like, Granville, Greenacre. Jeez. Not really. Uh, like, it's pretty much, it's, it's like Strathfield, Homebush. But all of the guys that went there were, it was a school for, like, people who were going to, wanted to do a trade. Oh, okay. So, a tradie school, which was, like, hair and beauty. Wow. Uh, yeah, they're, they're great girls. Um, and then... You've got your um, carpenters, plumbers, electricians, okay. mechanics. So that's where you went and did that's your where thing. I did. I, yeah, so it got me um, a statement of attainment for my Cert 1, yeah. or Cert 3, sorry. So it pretty much took the first year of my apprenticeship when I started okay. the job. It got me the job, and it was a huge culture shock. Someone, me and my twin brother, it doesn't look anything like me. He's like fucking 6'4", big, that's cool. goofy looking motherfucker. Okay. Um, he, me and him had long blonde hair at the time when JB yeah, yeah, had hair. Yeah. And we were catching the train, a two a, a train and or two trains in a ferry, sorry, from where I lived or grew up in Bundina and we would travel an hour and twenty and there's just these lebos like and they're, they're so funny and yeah. like I say that in the most like non rude way. I just like cause they would go, Oh you bogan cunt, what's going on? Uh, and I'd be like, oh, you fucking lebo dog, fucking give me some out of my nush, you know, like Was it coming from Cronulla was also like a vibe? Mate, we were in the time where all they kept saying was like well, you want a canola riot? Oh, yeah, yeah, you want yeah, a riot? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Which shit. is yeah, pretty funny, but... Uh, it's good that you could all like laugh about it, We had it, a great, I I had like, a great that's time. That's pretty cool. Yeah, we had a hectic... That's there was never cool. any like bad vibes there. Mm. Obviously, they probably throw ciggy butts out the window these days, and I wish I could tell them not to, but... Big problem, though. Yeah, it's a big problem here in Cronulla. 
But um, but okay. So you've spent a, you had to spend a bit of time out out west to get your trade. Yep. I mean, where awesome. you and I connected was you know you have rocked up to a couple of events, namely Arika. That's where you focused, right? Have you done any of the others? No, I haven't. I um, I've only done. Like, I've been to the Cook Islands. At, I've done two stints over there. Okay, just I free surfing. I love that place. Heard it's though. really good. Oh I've my never been. God, what a paradise! Like, if you could imagine what a Pacific Island holiday is, that yeah. is it. Surfing, yeah. heaps of booze. Yeah. Great mountain climbs, crystal clear water. It's always warm. Yeah. And when you go and watch a sunset, it is beautiful. Yeah. It's a great place to take your missus. Okay. Great place to take the missus. Travel sure. advice from Jack Baker right Tide there. Tide goes low. If there's, you try and make, you know, or whatever it may be for wherever you're surfing. Yep. You give you a couple of hours to your missus, a couple of hours to surf, a couple of hours to lunch with the missus. Is um, it a similar spot? Like, is it a place where there is a number of, like, reef passes kind of within there's, there's striking distance? There's just little, distance? little, it, it takes you 40 minutes around the island. Yeah, right. There's so it's pretty accessible. If it's offshore, oh, onshore this side, offshore that side. Sweet. The swell's the same. So a couple of stints there. But I mean, I want to get onto this competition side thing because yeah. I mean, it was really painful as a fellow Aussie <sighs> the first year that I met you there, and you rocked up. You came. I didn't know you were coming. Hadn't met you yet. And you, your first heat of the trials. First heat, day one. I day was one. Really sick. The first two days. Yeah, you weren't well. feeling great, oh, and then sick. you were like out. Yep. first heat yep. and it was like pretty gnarly like it would have been Jay, oh, I started my holiday then really yeah I? yeah you started yeah, holiday mode <laughs> but it was it was kind of frustrating too because you know like there's so few Aussies on the in the comp so it's kind of like nice when for me I was like oh sick another Aussie guy this should be fun yeah let's like kick all these South African asses because they always win stuff now <laughs> and um but no it just didn't quite come together but then you came back the second year and you had a better crack yeah but yeah. what, still, did you get through the trials of that one? I didn't or you get through, no, I didn't get through the still trials. Still came on stuck, eh? heat short, I believe. Yeah, you were, yeah, right. Yeah, heat short. I was the, I think uh, that Nath, Nath, uh, Nelson Florence or something? Nelson Flores, yeah, not he's sure. He's from there, from there. Isn't he's he? yeah, from Chile, yeah. yeah. I think he knocked me out. So yeah, he's pretty good. Fuck those guys there, they're so wild. They're good. That wave is fucked up. Like it's so good. It, like, you watch it on the webcam. Like, I went there thinking, you know, like, it's got a big right better on rights and a slabby left like uh, how bad can it be mm, it oh, can be bad brutal mm. brutal no one for anyone at home that hasn't been there it is like the most gnarly wave like shark island is like they're, they're quite similar for how unpredictable it can be yeah you, when you take off you hook into that like the, mm. the barrel doesn't barrel it like it folds up and then all of a sudden it gets to the inside and yeah. pop, like on the left especially exactly. really pulls open yeah and there's no water and you're yeah. like oh sinago senora <laughs> you go to the right and you can spot that that yeah. triangulation yeah. miles away yeah. and you're like, holy it's dang it's pretty <laughs> inti intimidating eh when you got that ramp yeah and you're like, I'm, I'm meant to do something like oh that. you know i'm not getting paid enough to i'm not even getting paid for this you know <laughs> you spend countless bits of money to hurt yourself yeah it hurts it but hurts. i mean it's all for the love and the glory you know glory Definitely the glory. <laughs> and the glory if you can get it. There's so many girls and the, there and the scars. Yeah, yeah, and there's a good Boogans. vibe for the bodyboarders there, eh? Yeah, like, people need, actually love us. They need to get the girls out there. Yeah. And, and I know a few of them are, like, keen. Ayaka surfs so good out there. I know, I know. And she I think, rips. I think there was a year before I came back on the tour where they did actually have a women's event out there. And it, as far as I can understand, like, it went pretty solid. And, I mean, the girls surfed at Fronton last year and... You know, they put on a good show. Same like, crew out there. They exactly. Do, yeah. Exactly. They go hard. When you so, dangle yeah. the carrot, anyone's going to really chase fully, it. Fully. Fully. And we do crazy things when we've got competition jerseys Seriously. On. Seriously. Yeah, all of us do weird stuff. So it's like the girls are no different. But For, for every year I've been in Chile, mm. or the, I, don't, I can't remember how fucking tongue thing now, but Mac, Crowley, and Ayaka Suzuki have been there both times I've been Hang there. In. And I yeah. stayed I stayed with them last time. Oh, that's was, right. We were in the same place. And fuck, they are... a duo not to reckon with like yeah. a force not to reckon with yeah they're like mac the stand-up guy the stuggy king are you yeah. joking me i know he rips so. and sammy too yeah shout out to all the hawaiian boys paddle you're in there too mate 
<laughs> You're a good guy. The crew. <laughs> You're good cunts. <laughs> <laughs> they love that word. God, eh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put a fucking. They um, fizz up so hard. When I'm gonna you say have that. to put a language warning at the start of this podcast. Sa- Sammy, Sammy Morantino. <laughs> hey Jack, yeah, you sick cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I've been chasing Sammy for a podcast. We haven't lined it up oh, yet. Oh man, he's so funny. I can't funny. wait. He's I can't a huge wait. funny dude. He fizzes up. He's the fizz lord. But um, but where does it fit for you? Like, I mean, when you come over to these competitions, what was previously the APB, it's now the IBC. Um, what are you like? You know, how competitive are you in your own mindset? You know, like when you approach all this, you like, I want to, I want to be up there one day, or are you just more like, hey, you know what? I just want to get a couple of good waves and hang out with the boys and have a good time. Man, like I, I'm no stress. I'm pretty. I'd be pretty keen to chase it. Um, obviously. Once you project into your first event, you kind of get points into a, you know, you can yeah. slip into a few more, like it's guaranteed to get into events. Yeah. Um, like, so if I got through the trials in Eureka, I would have been put straight into the, the comp at Kayama. Yeah. And then even if I, you know, went shit, I would probably have a placing for an event after and after yeah, and yeah. so forth. You build your seating. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, obviously if I built my, yeah, you're right. If I built my seating, then I would definitely chase it to, yeah. you know, Prove you the best. Shout out to all my competitors. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like this year, were you planning before COVID ruined everything? Was that on your Mate, agenda straight again? Back, straight back to Eureka and, yeah. and a Kike. Oh, oh you're going to do a Kike. Kike. It's perfect for you if you love rides. Oh my God, yeah. For sure. That it's, wave's amazing. Oh, like that. And that, you're right. The whole, that part of the world there, bodyboarding... They it's worship. Special. Yeah, 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 they yeah. love that sport. That it is the Canaries so are similar. There. Like Canaries yep, bodyboarders yeah. rule there, which I is really cool. I went to a cool. school last year. We, did you come to the school with us in Eureka? Yeah. Well, oh, we went to a primary school, right? There was yeah, maybe like one. 10, 10 of us. Yeah. And the kids were losing it. Yeah. Absolutely losing. I and like, not just like thirty kids or so. Like fucking three hundred yeah. mini grommets going berserk in the crowd. Yeah, it's an interesting parallel universe chili like i really love that it has that vibe and i and i think it's like super cool but there's also like this um i worry that there's this naivety about what bodyboarding can actually do for you as a profession like Mm -hmm. i i worry that it's like a it's an idea of what a future can be not a reality whereas you know like we all had these we had these same I, i went to school's 20, 15 to 20 years ago when I was having my first dig at being a pro and I was one of the young guys then and we were we were going to schools with Kingy and Lester and stuff like that and you know there was there was lots of kids there and they were listening they weren't all frothing like what Chilean, Chilean kids do but like there was there was that moment where we thought oh we're building something I just I don't know I hope Chile can become a parallel universe I really hope it gets there but for me I'm just like oh I still don't, don't see this working out the way yeah. they think it's going to work out. Yeah, yeah. But I hope I'm wrong. Well, they, they seem That's to have just government. like a bit of an old guy, maybe <laughs> a bit a bitter morbid, and twisted. Approach, yeah. yeah, but yeah. the government supporting it, I think yeah. that is a big difference. That's, that that definitely helps. For sure. Being a political party yep. that goes, you know, yeah, pushes yeah. people. Yeah, there's, there's, there's public money being funneled into it, which and is they, really they, cool. I don't know why it's not done here, but they fucking send cleaners out. Like, you, you go out at night and there's shit everywhere. It's a <laughs> filthy place. I know. By 11 o'clock, spotless. I again. know. It's wild, spotless. though. It, like... It's pretty cool. What What's going on here in Australia? We are lagging. Well, I, what here's one way. I think what's going on is maybe Chileans actually accept that they're humans and they're a bit messy. Yeah. And the government's like, you know what? Rather than try to shame you into changing your messiness... Be human yeah. at night, and then we'll clean up in the morning, but we'll all pay tax to pay for it. Yeah. It's like, but it might be like a gentleman's that. agreement. Yeah, yeah. Which I don't think is terrible. Like, I mean, I know in Sweden, where I used to live, there were big, like, public parties, different things, like Spring Festival and all that. And, like, the pub, like this park that we're in now would be, like, atrociously trashed. Yeah. Everything That's everywhere. Me, Bottles, right? everything. Next morning, spotless. Mm. So it's just kind of like accepting humanity, humans for how messy we are <laughs> yeah, and then going, yeah. you know what, we're not going to shame A little shame bit more you. forgiving, yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. just like clean up and pay for it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. But you're right, it's pretty remarkable as an Aussie to be there and you you kind of see how messy it gets during the day and then it's like next morning, just like, hey, the welcome fa- back. The fact that it doesn't rain there too. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gnarly. It's, it's actually Groundhog Day there. Yeah. Every day. <laughs> 
cloudy. On shore by 12. Yeah, cloudy in the morning. Mm. Great vibes in the afternoon. How nice is it? You walk to the top of that mountain. Yeah. So it would, it would touch and chilly a bit too much. No, 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 but I think it's really cool. I think um, it it's just, place. it's great that, like, as a young guy, I mean, have you, did you do the competition stuff in Australia? Like, have you come up through that rank? So I never, I always... Because you must be the same age. Are you the same age as Louis and George and all that? Or are yeah, you... yeah, about the same age, yep. yeah. So they were always, like, state and, like, yeah. nationals and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I probably just missed out on a window to even think about going up there. Ah. Maybe, like, a year. Like, I, I probably started bodyboarding when I was about 12. Okay. And then took it, like, more competitively, maybe, like, when I was, like, 15, 16. Yeah, it's getting the late, Cronulla, isn't it? Yeah. Cronulla bodyboard clubs, yeah. you know. They had, like, three different divisions of like uh, beginner yep. intermediate and then like fucking like top Lester. dogs yeah they do they had John Showell they had Leicester yeah they had that would have been, been pretty competitive back then oh, oh, oh. Mm. and then like by the years started going on they, they started dropping divisions and now it's all just one yeah. division but the division we have so Cronulla Bodyboard Club now has gone from almost not existing to having these $500 prize pool money comps at the island Oh, is there cash in those? Well, the last one, yeah. Really? So yeah. everyone, what, chucks everyone, money in? I can't remember what the, the fee was. It might have been like 20... Oh, fuck, it would have been... Man, I've got to become a member of this club. It, oh, and then you, you end up you're like... you're at don't, don't get me wrong, some people are definitely not happy about it. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday for some people is the only yeah, day. It's the only day they get. And then you, fuck, we think you're going to go run a comp up there. <laughs> wow, and when the surf's on, yeah. you're at the shark So on. one of the old boys, um, Greg McKinley, who, who's like a oh, okay. ox, he, he's like an old surfer, stand yeah. up, get along, like, you know, he had two peas in the pot. He's a really funny guy. Um, some would definitely think different. Um, yeah. But, yeah, he if he finds out there's a comp, the words that come out of his mouth, it makes yeah. it shrivel a little, you know. When yeah. You're like, fucking comp, you know, can't pay for that. Like, you can't pay for waves and stuff like that. Oh, and yeah. Kip Caddy, I was living with, um, he's a rip curl guy, big, yeah. big wave kind of surfer dude. Um, and he was out there, he drops in on Josh Kahi okay. during the last comp, who's Blackie, aka Blackie, won a long comp a few years ago. Oh, okay. Used to be on the Elemento, Elemento P team, he was really good, really good surfer. Anyway, um, Josh, Kip drops in on him and goes, 50 bucks doesn't buy your waves, cunt. The audacity on the bloke. <laughs> He's a good guy, like he loves, we all love the surf, and it, like we're all mates, it doesn't matter if you stand up or lay down, as long as you've got a smile on your door. Yeah, that's funny. So there's a bit of um, bit of contentious um, opinion on that Having question. Having a comp at like such a, you know, once a year, you can pull it off. Yeah. Once every, like once a month. Yeah, yeah it's kind of pushing it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. But it's really cool. I mean, what do you think it's doing for, I actually spoke to Andrew Lester about this this morning because we were talking about how, you know, like when I was growing up here, I was looking up to him and, and Kingy and those guys, that kind of generation a bit above me. And, um... He was he was at the alley, you know, like he was down there I've groveling. Few, have you seen a few come through? Yeah, There's it's been, been pretty good. Coming through. Yeah, it's, it's been, was good today. Yeah, right. but like we we're talking about how like he spent all of his youth, like learning there. He also put time in eventually out at Shark Island, but you know the comps are in there. Like his competitive brilliance was kind of forged on these average beach breaks, and yeah. so then. When he, he won multiple Australian tours, he, he won Australian titles, you know, he was a competitive machine. Today, there's kids that are coming up who are actually getting to surf Shark Island instead. Mm. And are they going to learn, what are they going to learn from that? Like, certainly, they're going to know how to charge, but what do you think? How do you think that's going to affect their development as riders? Well, in... In the same way that you'd, you'd surf a comp in in Chile, mm. um, like I I wasn't because I was semi I was Cronulla Bodyboard Club was originally all the beaches. Yeah. So it was like you kind of could always move around, get different waves. Yeah. And then it changed to your next. You've got the next one unless yeah. you snag. Like there's plenty of waves coming through or something. Yeah. Um, I think it'll really help. Um, for events like that where you're at a reef break where it's a small takeoff and there's a and priority you learn system to and use whatnot. the priority I, I never knew that yeah. how to I don't give a fuck I'm just going to get the next wave I yeah. need to get a score on the board or I need to get I never yeah. really had the nah if you wait this guy's only got a fucking six if you paddle for the next one and semi 
you know, you could really dog shot this cunt and not yeah. let him get this next yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, or, you know, and so forth. Yeah. So it, it kind of opens, I guess it opens you up to that side. But yeah, you're at the same time not surfing the beaches, you probably, you're not open to more opportunity. Yeah. You learn to be a bit more, with that one wave that you get, it might be the only one wave you get. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting. It's interesting. I kind of, I mean, is there a bit of a mix with the Cronulla Bodyboard Club? Like, do they do they get onto the beaches or is it, oh, is it just, they're would, just really focused on reef now? I wouldn't get out of bed for you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I love surfing up the beaches, but it's just a shit fight. Like, unless, yeah. it's hard to get them really good. Yeah. Um, it'd, it'd be great if, you know, we always had, like, a good bank there. When the yeah. alley does turn on, which is very rarely these days, mm. they, they pump so much sand out of Cronulla and sold it all to fucking Hawaii. Yeah, I heard this so this all morning. These sand, all these sand dunes. When I was a kid, they were so big, like, and then over the years, like, they, they started in the 70s and they've just been doing it and doing it. And now, on the other side of those dunes, that we're, we are looking at everybody at home. It's all water behind that because yeah. they've actually gone under sea level. Right. So they've just dredged it. And then they're doing all landfill out there now. And when you drive out to Cornell, it's like looking at fucking oh, Ayers Rock. Oh, is it a landfill? Yeah, it's a landfill oh, from um, concrete and like... Um, yeah, building waste. Building waste. waste. That's it. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And um, so they're just rebuilding into that. Oh. So the sand's never really been the same. And some people argue, oh, Shark Island's changed or the Cornell Points, you know, it's never been the same or whatever. The reefs are pretty much exactly how they are. They've, they've kind of... You'd think they'd be remain pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. standard. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't reckon... If anything, though, it, it would definitely affect the sand movements along the beach, though, for, in terms of banks. It's going to fuck everything. Like, yeah. Over time, it, the, the waves are always washing up against the, the dunes the dune. down at North yeah. Carolina now. And, like, it's all try, they're all trying to hold it in with concrete, but it's only going to last so yeah. long. They dredged it. So this... this place where Cronulla is there's a big river behind here for yep. packing yep. and in the, they did the same they used to dredge it out for the ferries but what yep. ended up happening is they sucked out most of the sand for one of the beaches right. which because it was all like a big bay it was pretty much all waist deep yeah, into right. certain few locations where the boats and the ferries came through yeah. and now it's all pretty much seaweed and there's no um, there's no more sand really there it's, yeah, a, right. it's a completely different vegetation yeah Wow. Because they keep, they try to put sand back in here, but then we get the storms and they just wash it back out. Yeah. Nah, it's a problem, eh? You just can't see it, yeah. They need to put some rocks in or something. Yeah, or some sand. Yeah. <laughs> put some sand back. Bring it back. Get it back from Hawaii, of all places. Yeah. That's so weird. Talk to them Hawaiians. That's weird, that one boys sand. should be able to bring us some sand back. So they're your sponsor, sort it out. Yeah, they got board bags. We'll How's that subtly change? It just hit our backs. That's interesting. It's been yeah. nor'east pretty much all day. Yeah. Well, cool. I mean, to, to kind of, we're at a pretty sweet spot for the podcast length. What are, like, what do you see for yourself in the, in the coming years? You know, you've dipped your toe in at the, the APP. Wife of the G-string. <laughs> I was thinking more <laughs> in your bodyboarding world. You know, because you are really flying the flag for a region here. Like, you know, like, the, you're, you're currently it from Cronulla. Yeah, you're currently... <laughs> The guy from Cronulla who's... If only mum could see me just, now. ...who's stepping onto the international stage. And I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a history behind you... Yeah. Um, that, ...that is pretty rich and, and it's diverse and it has, you know, characters like your Nuggets and your Wing Nuts. It's yeah. got your competitive Lords like your Lesters and your Shoals. And so, like, where does Jack Baker fit into this kind of lineage that... You know, what's what's next for you? Well, we've currently got that movement short circuit. Um, oh, okay. That, that's going on. That's been going through my head a lot. Have um, you got an entry in already? I haven't. Um, I've been... I, I probably sat down on my thumb for a swell. I, uh, I could have shuffled a lot of work. It was a, I had a huge day of work. Could have shuffled it. Didn't do it. I banked on another day, which ended up being really fun. And, like, it was a great day of surfing, but kicking myself I didn't go to a, a swell. Yeah. Um, with this pandemic, it's kind of making limited options. Mm. Um, but so that's this year. But in the foreseeable future, realistically, I always want to remain present on bodyboarding. Um, I think Cronulla might eventually just get too large for its its own good. Yeah. Um, not many people are game enough to surf the actual good waves, but it's hard to get actual good waves. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, like, you can always, you always get a wave, but you might surf with 100 people, and it'd be pretty abo. Mm. 
or if you get really good waves, you're surfing with really good guys who are super always competitive. Yeah. So surfboard, bodyboard, whatever it yeah. is. Um, but yeah, I just always want to remain kind of on that stage wherever I may be. Um, obviously, build up my little business a little bit more. Yeah. Doing mobile surfing. And it's doing well? Yeah, it's, it's going pretty good. Yeah. Um, I've got like, you know, all my mates and I'm always at the surf car park going, hey, who services your high Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, cool. I love Toyota. Fuck Volkswagen. Oh. Fuck false. <laughs> Kirky's got a Volkswagen. They're public enemy. So that's your advice. Enemy. Don't that's buy a Volkswagen. So Toyota's your advice. Oh, hun- mate, my Land Cruiser. Spoken to you earlier. Oh. Woof. Mate, you can't go wrong with a troop carrier. Everyone, if there's anyone listening to this, and there's someone, there should be someone with a troopy in there, because obviously legends have listened to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Troopies uh, are cool. They like, are. I can see the attraction. They go anywhere. One's got a bed in the back. You... I'd feel pretty manly if I had one. Yeah, yeah. I'd yeah. feel like 20% more manly, fle- masculine. You flex on your little coffee yeah, Volkswagen. Yeah, I'd re- like, yeah, I'd I'd be... get a latte. Like, I'm definitely Volkswagen. a softer man <laughs> as a result of that purchase. But you know what? Maybe that's what I am. Yeah, no, for yeah, sure. You know, like, Mate, it takes maybe all it's colors exactly who I am. Shapes and colors to make the girl, world go around. <laughs> But what about competitively? Are you going to try and put a full year on the tour if you can if I, stash away the cash? And... Yeah, I could eat, I could do that. Yeah. Um, and I would just do event, maybe do like four events and split it up. Just yeah. Just because I work, like working for myself, it, it's under my name. Yeah. So people kind of expect me to show up. Yeah. So I could pull a stint where maybe two weeks for a couple of months I, yeah. I, I shot over. I'm so keen to get back to Chile. Like, yeah. And like Fronton is so, also high in the I was going to say, it's like it Hawaii must be Fronton there. And, yeah. Like, I've been to Chile twice, which which is excellent. But, yeah, there's other warm water waves. Chile's quite cold. Totally. Um, but it's, it's just guaranteed waves. You always get waves there. That's why I keep going back. I yeah. know I'm going to get a good time. Oh, there. it's sick. It's sick. It's culturally quite interesting as well, you know, with the language and the food yeah. and all that. Like, I love the Spanish. That it's great. So much fun. It's great. But you, you haven't done a Hawaii trip yet. I haven't. I haven't. Oh, yeah, you got to that, do that. That's, yeah. But I think it's also, like, here where it's just so busy and localised. Yeah, but you know, I, as someone who I, I experienced it in the early 2000s when I was first having a dig, and then I think the last year I was there was 2006, and it was gnarly. There was like 150 bodyboarders from Australia there at once to yeah. all make it big, and it was a it was a joke, and it was embarrassing, really. Like, and I hated every moment I spent there. But now, as an older guy who I don't feel like I've got anything to prove, so it's it's <laughs> nice to go there and, and just surf. appreciate it, and to settle into the lineup and know where I fit mm. and know when I'm getting a good break. So like, there's moments. The last time I was there, which was earlier this year before the world ended, um, you know, I was out at pipe Maybe it's afternoons. Restart. Maybe the world's restart. Hope so, because like it was pretty sick. Like it was like. You know, pipeline, sun's going down, nobody's chasing photos, six to eight feet, four people out. And I'm like, I'll take this. Yeah. Like, this is great. And it's like really fun and beautiful. It's a beautiful wave. So you get your moments, but there's so much more to Hawaii. Like, I think it's just such a culturally interesting place. And yeah, beautiful, really stunning and great for couples and families like you can yeah. actually go there with it with a crew and Hot actually with a well if that's your if that's your taste yeah. you can do that Keep and hitting that button over yeah there. see there you go I'm trying to find but maybe that. just saw that out and then go to hawaii <laughs> like she'll be happy yeah straight back to the cooks there's no one there man well yeah the cooks sound really good too actually you always you can always find a wave on your own which i really enjoy that's doing sweet. that's i sweet. mean i always love surfing with my mates mm. but it's somewhere you know tropical waters Obviously, proving ground why is it's definitely yeah, and it's a rite of passage. Yeah, it's just right, kind of like right, yeah. it's like that. going out at Shark Island too. You know, like I think every bodyboarder in Australia ought to go Wants out there to one or, day. Yeah, would all, yeah, they've would got to paddle out there, and they may yeah. not get a wave, but it's good to be out there and experience it. So, I think um, yeah, there's just certain spots on the in the bodyboarding path. I think that you, you've got to go to Hawaii. Um, I think now too, you should go to Nazare. And experience that powerful yeah, beach break. You yeah, know, that looks so sick. Oh, I love amazing. that idea of the little wet. Oh, yeah. There's so many good places. There's so many in the good world, places, aren't there? But there's places where bodyboarding is valued and appreciated. So yeah, like the I surfing think, culture there. I think. Yeah, it's great. All right, well, Jack Baker, let's go up to that RSL. Sit back on San- a few scooters. Sanitize our hands and <laughs> let's hope it doesn't become a hot spot in the next uh, week. And <laughs> yeah, get a little, on the news. Get a little phone call. A little lung infection after a oh, burst one. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that'd be pretty gnarly for you, mate. I'm worried about it, but 
think we'll be right. You're still standing. Still smoking. Thanks, but everyone, for tuning in again. Tobacco. No tobacco. <laughs> Shut up, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go eat.